As we said before, sort of alluded to the fact that Canada is a country with plenty of allies and pretty much uh, well-liked across the world. So if we're talking allies, it's kind of interesting to see the official US statement on the Saudi-Canada dispute. I've, I've cut and pasted it here from Slate.com. This is where we found it uh, in full, at least. Very tame language. Lots of comments about, uh, and, you know, sort of general statements encouraging Saudi Arabia to respect due process when it comes to human rights. But the line I've highlighted, Canada and Saudi Arabia are both close partners of the United States. I refer you to the Canadian and Saudi ministries of foreign affairs for further information. So Matthew Goodwin with us now, Senior Fellow in the Europe Program at Chatham House, joining us on Skype from London. I, I, I describe that as tame, Matthew. It's almost just completely non-committal, saying, oh, well, we don't really have a view on this, go and talk to them about it. Is that what you'd expect from the United States, or is that maybe what we expect from the United States under President Trump? Well, uh, thank you for uh, having me on. This is certainly a very... Uh, different response from what we would have seen under the previous uh, US administration and President Obama. Uh, I think it's fair to say that many people within the Canadian uh, diplomatic community have been rather surprised by this response. Uh, it certainly suggests that President Trump uh, does not view uh, the Canadian uh, uh, ally, uh, his northern neighbour, uh, as the pressing priority in this dispute. Uh, and I would suggest that actually what we've seen um, in the response from America is really a reflection of the way in which Trump's administration have got much closer to the uh, Saudi uh, uh, kingdom. Mm. And that in turn, I think, reflects a lot of mutual business interests, which Trump is clearly putting before uh, his traditional uh, or his country's traditional alliances with other uh, NATO members. We can be guilty of focusing a little too much sometimes on the US and on Donald Trump. So tell me about Canada's other allies and, and who else should maybe be standing up here? Well, to be frank, I was expecting uh, not only a lot more from the United States, but also from Europe, uh, and in particular, the European uh, Commission. I think more generally, the European Union has struggled on the, on the international stage. And I think in this case, they've struggled to rally around uh, their Canadian ally uh, and also, of course, their liberal Canadian ally, Justin Trudeau, in a way that you might uh, have otherwise expected. I think also this partly reflects the way in which Saudi Arabia has become more aggressive in its foreign policy stance. It's become far more assertive and willing to push back against uh, uh, other nations in the West. And of course, that in a way speaks to the weakness of uh, the European Union on the international stage. It should be more unified. It should be delivering uh, a coordinated response with Canada. And it just currently isn't there. Uh, and I think there's a great deal of frustration, certainly in London and also in uh, Brussels and Paris and Berlin, at, at the, just the uh, slow pace at which uh, the diplomatic community appears to be moving. NATO, uh, Canada's a member of NATO, Canada's a member of NAFTA, all these sorts of things. I'm just wondering about such alliances and whether in this day and age, in 2018, how much, how much notice we have to pay to them. Because as you say, Donald Trump and the United States, for example, are much happier to align themselves with uh, an ally like Saudi Arabia rather than an actual you know, treaty partner like Canada. I think we've had an interesting debate in the West about does the election of Donald Trump, does the rise of populism in the West signal uh, a, a substantive change in these international alliances? And I think some people were reluctant to believe that rhetoric uh, would manifest in action. I think what we've seen in this case is that actually that's wrong, that this rhetoric of shifting international alliances away from those traditional NATO partnerships is, is actually real and that Trump does view uh, business connections, a big investment in infrastructure projects, for example, which the Saudis have been very closely involved with as being real markers of international diplomacy. Of course, let's also not forget that the Saudis have invested quite heavily in Canadian projects mm. and we're probably expecting those business interests to supersede uh, political 
uh, objectives uh, too. So it may be, I suggest this as a hypothesis, that we're beginning to see corporate interests, business interests actually transcend mm. what is uh, usually seen in the international community. Matthew Goodwin from Chatham House. We, we still managed to come back and talk about Donald Trump in America, didn't we? But it's just the way of the world these days. Matthew from Chatham House, thank you. This is the news grid.